Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and welcome to Overwatch Central. So with Torbjorn going up in popularity, I figured now is a good time to sit down with Fury to basically go over some major tips and mistakes that people are making when they play this hero. Now seems a really good time to pick him up, and so I figured this was the perfect time to put this video out. You can check out all of Fury's details in the description below, but let's get started. So we've got a lot of awesome tips coming in this video, Fury, but you wanted to start with one around Torbjorn's height. So for the first Torbjorn tip, because of Torbjorn's small stature, he can actually parkour in certain locations on some maps. A good example is Nepal Village. That little off bridge area to the side of the point, he can actually parkour off of the planks to get to the other side. Another thing that he can do with his height is he can avoid things like line of sight ultimates. So D.Va, for instance, because Diva Bomb will end up being line of sight based, if he hides behind a small pillar that other characters actually can't, he'll survive while the others would die. And for a character like McCree, who fires his ultimate out in a projectile form, he can actually throw his turret down in front of him, hide behind the turret, and then the bullet will hit the turret instead of hitting the Torbjorn. We've had videos in the past talking about how Torbjorn's primary fire is really the way to go, to be honest, when it comes to outputting damage, but it can be really hard to hit certain targets, especially those at different heights. So what kind of tips do you have around aiming with Torbjorn? When you're versing taller characters, it might actually be a little bit harder to aim at their head. So one thing I highly suggest is to actually jump at them. It is a very high risk move though, because jumping actually makes you more predictable. But for certain characters like Roadhog, where it is very, very difficult to get either a meat shot from your right click off or a primary fire onto their head, it is a lot easier to actually just jump right at them or just jump where you are. Overload is a fairly new ability for Torbjorn and in a previous video you said that it was one of the best things added to his kit and it's an incredibly strong ability, increasing your running speed, giving you a little bit extra armor, but what's the best way to use it? What kind of tips do you have there? So for using Overload, I highly suggest to use it before using your ultimate in high risk situations. Don't use it if you're in a low risk situation where maybe you might get dove afterwards and you'll be able to overload out or overload to get a kill. Using overload in a high risk situation avoids people shooting you and killing you and or throwing projectiles at you that you could have easily dodged if you had that extra movement speed. And you can't use anything while inside of your ultimate so this is the only option for using overload to save yourself unless you did it after but by that time you'd already be dead. Now we can't talk about Torbjorn without highlighting turrets and I think turret placement is the biggest thing that people can muck up on especially as you climb to the highest tiers so kind of what tips and advice would you have for people that want to get the most out of placing the turret? Now typically when placing a turret that's something that you really really want to consider because the advantages of high ground are that it can overview an entire location, it can see almost everything and has good sight lines. But the problem is that whatever the turret can see, they can see the turret as well. That is the key when placing Torb turret. So what's better, high ground, where it can view everything, or low ground, where it has a limited field of view? Well, in my opinion, unless you have a shield to protect the turret for high ground to cover that weakness that the turret has, where it can be seen easily and destroyed, I almost always suggest a lot of the times to place it on the low ground. Because there, the turret has natural protec protection from both the environment and your allies. For example, if you have an Orisa shield and you're placing it at the choke point or you're placing it by the payload, the turret is getting that natural protection from the bullets from the shield covering it. While if you were to place it on high ground, they would still be able to shoot over the shield even though the shield is right in front of them. Because the turret is too high up, and it can get destroyed very easily. And I guess the ultimate. It seems like when Torbjorn first came out, this ultimate was kind of glossed over as not being very good, but as time has gone on, people are saying that it's incredibly strong, especially against stuff like goats. So what advice do you have around the Molten Splooge ultimate? So for a tip on using Torbjorn's ultimate, this is one of the many options that you have during it, but I very much suggest that you tap fire Torbjorn ult. If you're holding down Torbjorn ult, you may spewing more of your load than you actually want to. But if you tap fire, even though you can still occasionally fire two shots, in general, you'll be able to fire 
precise amounts wherever you need it. And in general, this is what I tend to do. I'll tend to rapid tap fire whenever I want to get it out quicker instead of holding down because even if I move my mouse around while holding down, it could be firing them in the same location and it doesn't stack in the same location. While if you tap fire while moving around, it still looks like you're doing the same thing except you're getting better spread out in different locations that will help you in the long run. Now, unlike previous videos where we just highlight one mistake, you really wanted to highlight three in particular all around different areas. The first being around Overload. We highlighted how it's a really strong ability, but how are people making big mistakes with it? So this is something that I see way too many Torbjorns do. They go too aggressive and they use their shotgun way too much. Torbjorns will use their E to go in. They'll get maybe a kill, but then they will die making the trade almost worthless because they have no way to get out now. They use their E as an engagement, their overload, and then they couldn't back out because they had no way to do so. Generally speaking, you use overload if you have team to back you up, or if you are caught by a roadhog hook or in a bad position that you want to get out of, so you use that movement speed and that kill potential to get the quick kill or get out or in 1v1 scenarios, but too many people use it as a sort of god mode when it doesn't really do that for you, and they go a little bit too deep. And on the shotgun note, too many people seem to think that shotgun is the end all solution, but your primary fire helps out a ton. It requires less ammo, you don't have to get as close. And, in general, because of the no fall off rule, you can stay as far away as possible and spam to your heart's content. While shotgun, you have to be within the 15 meters for it to not take the fall off damage. You have to make sure that they don't have armor because each pellet will get negated by the armor. And you have to make sure that all of the shotgun pellets hit by being close enough but the close range for close enough is generally within like three to four meters because of the terrible shotgun spread, the random uh, way the pattern moves, because sometimes the star pattern will be upright, sometimes it'll be flipped. It's all random there. So in general, people use shotgun way too much. It is a good tool when you're close range and it's good because it fires faster than your primary fire. So finishing off low health targets is good, but too many people rely so much on shotgun when primary fire is such a good option. Synonymous with Torbjorn is his turret. So what kind of mistakes do you see people doing? We kind of highlighted some advice for those that really want to get the most out of it, but what's one thing that people are really messing up on? So one thing I see a lot of uh, Torbjorns do that is very, very bad is they don't think when they position the turret. A lot of people will tend to put it a little bit too over the edge where it'll end up getting seen and shot at or killed, or they'll hide it in a corner that has virtually no value to where it can actually view. When placing the turret, there's a lot of things that you need to consider, but the most important I would say is create a goal in your mind for what you want the turret to do. Do you want it to cover your backline? Do you want it to shoot and provide a fire support against shields? Do you want it to cover the choke? Whatever is in your mind that you want it to do, you have to consider that as the options here end up becoming more and more. Because too many people end up throwing the turret in a random location that won't gain any value and it will die way too fast. The turret needs to have a goal and have some sort of protection. This is what we mentioned earlier with the low ground tip. The low ground protects the turret a lot more even if the high ground gets a better view. But sometimes, sometimes, especially on last point overtime, you can put the turret on the high ground, it won't be focused because it's not the primary goal everybody wants to get everyone off the, the payload. So the turret can actually rapid fire everyone down without being focused and it has a better positional advantage over the enemy team then. This is something to always consider is that the turret positioning will be situational. And you actually had another mistake for the turret, especially when it came to healing. We haven't spoken about the hammer at all really, but from the sounds of it, you should be getting it out too often, right? So for a mistake that a lot of Torbjorns tend to do, in my opinion, they tend to heal the turret too much. And they tend to do it in the worst possible scenarios. So when a turret is taking damage, 
in general, you would be better off leaving it to die. Because most people, most characters, will actually be able to just out damage your healing and you'd be wasting your time putting yourself in a bad position, and no matter what the turret will end up dying, even if you want to save it. So I very much suggest that you leave the turret, and if it gets out of combat, then you place a new one even, instead of healing it, because when you place a new one, you get the lower cooldown, and it's essentially full health now. Even though it can't shoot in that brief period, you would be more likely to be able to full heal it and waste less of your time. And before we finish, where can people see more of you on stuff like Twitch, Twitter, YouTube? Where can people see more of you not making these Toby mistakes, of course? You can find me mainly on twitch.tv slash 500 or Twitter at foo 500 or YouTube foo 500 Use the same tag for everything, so it's pretty easy. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, you can check out all of Fuey's details in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, and we'll see you next time.